this is T. Corman of the SCP Foundation continuing Dr. Campbell's request. Let's see. Entry 18, SCP-166, also known as the Teenage Succubus. Huh. Guess it shouldn't surprise me, but I didn't, I didn't realize we had a succubus here. That's... That's a weird thing to say. <laughs> anyway, um, object class Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-166 can be kept safely in a minimal security environment. As of uh, censored date and time, SCP-166 is housed in a standard Class B suite at Site-17 with the following alterations. The adjacent suite has been redesignated into a local observation post. Line of sight breaking translucent acrylic panels have been placed in the approach corridor and staging area to prevent direct line of sight into the containment suite from the exterior hallway. Warning signs have been placed throughout the containment area indicating that no male personnel are permitted in the area. Well, that kind of explains it then, doesn't it? Reasonable requests for personal items and modifications to the containment suite may be granted upon approval by a level 4 or higher authority. To date, SCP-166 has requested a copy of the Holy Bible, King James Version. A Catholic Rosary. Oh, the, I guess I should say the Bible and the Rosary were both granted. Access to a Catholic priest for confession, mass, and other sacraments denied. Various books and magazines, mostly religious in nature, granted pending review and approval of contents. A telephone from which to contact the abbess of the... I don't know why I expected that name to be there. Convent in Cornwall, England, granted. Huh. SCP-166 is to be allowed one hour of telephone time a week to this phone number only. SCP-166 is generally content to remain in her quarters as long as she is provided with entertainment in the form of religious materials, books, television, and art supplies. In return for her cooperation in her own confinement, SCP-166 is to be allowed a 12-hour excursion away from Site-17 to an adjacent uninhabited island no more than once per month. Limited release protocol 19-A is to be observed in these cases, with the added restriction no male personnel are to be allowed within 500 meters of SCP-166 during transport, and no male personnel are to be allowed on the island during her stay. As even the, as even the lightest clothing tends to cause pressure ulcers, or bed sores, within 45 minutes of constant wear, SCP-166 is to allowed to is allowed to go nude for medical purposes. All right. Garments and bed linens are to be made of long staple cotton and should be changed weekly. Male staff are forbidden from viewing or entering the direct vicinity of SCP-166. <laughs> no kidding. Violation of this order will result in immediate disciplinary review and possible termination. At least one female staff member must remain in adjacent observation room at all times and maintain direct visual observation of SCP-166 through viewing slits or closed-circuit television. In order to minimize the risk of accidental exposure, all cameras and windows shall be equipped with translucent filters with at least 50% exclusion of detail. No permanent record shall be kept of any photographic evidence of SCP-166's appearance. SCP-166 requires no sustenance save approximately one cc of human semen administered orally on a weekly basis. Arrangements have been made with a local sperm bank for this purpose. On-site procurement will be carried out in emergencies only. you got to be fucking kidding me. Despite the fact that SCP-166 requires no other sustenance, the subject can consume normal human food and does do so. Due to SCP's 166's many health issues, medical evaluation should be carried out at least once per week. Description: SCP-166 appears to be a hu 
uh, female human in her late teens of average height and slender build. Medical and physiological analysis indicates several deviations from baseline human norms, including accelerated hair growth, approximately 20 centimeters per month, vulnerability to airborne particle, that's not part particulate matter, such as cigarette smoke, which can induce symptoms similar to an acute asthma attack, increased sensitivity to pressure ulcers and alterations in dietary requirements. SCP-166 is noted for her unusual effect upon human males. Upon establishing visual contact with SCP-166, 100% of human males tested attempted immediate sexual contact, regardless of their normal sexual orientation. In approximately 70% of these test subjects, the impulse faded after being removed from SCP-166's presence. In 30% of these cases, however, the desire turned into obsession, resulting in violent attempts to gain access to SCP-166. Class A amnesthetics. You might have some problems with this, with your printer there, Dr. Campbell. Let's see what. Or affection. Smudges all over this fucking thing. In 43% of these cases, the remainder required termination. Holy shit. SCP-166's effect on males causes her no small amount of distress, not least due to her desire to follow a monastic life based on the principles of chastity, poverty, and obedience. Huh. This is, this is classic succubus here. For this reason and others... Contact between her and any human male is strictly prohibited. Addendum 166-A, Circumstances of Retrieval. SCP-166 was originally retrieved from a convent in Cornwall, England. According to the nuns, she had originally been delivered to the convent by a person of indistinguishable features who claimed that she was the offspring of an elder creature of great power and provided instructions for her care. All attempts to locate the monster have been unsuccessful to date. Hmm. SCP-166 was raised by the nuns in a cloistered environment until a young man, subject A, who sneaked into the convent to visit one of the novices, accidentally caught sight of her. Three days later, subject A became violent and attacked the convent, attempting to gain access to SCP-166. Subject A proceeded to kill one nun and severely injure three others before being neutralized by force. Hmm. A foundation operative consulting with a local priest regarding an unrelated matter heard of the incident and proceeded to the scene. When he too became enamored, the operative immediately cut off contact, placed himself into confinement, and requested a female operative from command to take over the retrieval operation. Agent Beatrice Maddox made contact with Mother Abbas shortly afterward, negotiating the transfer of SCP-166 to Foundation facilities for containment and research. That is nuts. Addendum 166E, text of a letter, unknown origin, placed in SCP-166's suite on expunged. Dear... I guess that's been covered up too. So she actually, huh, she's got a name. I first met your mother when she was a girl. She had hooves for feet and starlight in her eyes. She was beauty in nature, and I killed her with my own two hands. Eden isn't a place. It's a state of being. They wanted to take us back to it. I stopped them. I took paradise away from us for a second time. I have never regretted my actions on that day except one. That when you first met me on that day, you saw your father put a bullet into the head of your mother. I made no excuses, only explanation. I hope you understand why I did what I did. I hope you forgive me. I love you. I wish I could have done more for you. The best I could do was leave you in the hands of kind and loving people, 
and hoped that they would raise you in my place. From what I've seen, they did well. I'm sorry you couldn't stay with them. I'm sorry they've brought you to this place. I promise to do my best to make sure your stay here is pleasant. I promise to keep you safe. Happy 16th birthday, honey. Your father... And there's no name. Huh. Okay, then. A lot more forces at work here than we might have thought before. But... <laughs> Either way. God, you give me... <laughs> I gotta... I gotta stick to this. I have this inkling that you're gonna get me fired, Dr. Campbell. Because <laughs> I can't stick to task. And look at me, once again, rambling on about stuff. Either way, okay, this was... Focus. Alright, this was SCP-166, the Teenage Succubus.